Our sample today is going to be maple. For any of you that have ever tried to color maple before, it's a really difficult wood to put color on. Most of the time, if you go and buy a traditional, quote unquote, stain from a store, remember those stains are made out of pigments, the same kind of pigment that go into house paints. Maple and cherry are both woods that, they're hardwoods, but that they have an uneven pore structure. So the pigment, which are very large particles, tend to lodge themselves into the biggest pores on the surface. We're not gonna use any stain to color this. We're gonna use today an NGR dye. And this particular dye is made from the Mohawk Company. And it, it is a dye matter that is dissolved into acetone. So they call these NGR dyes because they're non-grain raising dyes. So what makes them non-grain raising? The absence of water. So the good thing with that is we've sanded this from 180 to 220. We don't have to raise the grain because this dye being dissolved into acetone is not going to raise the grain. Now, the downside to these types of dyes, they have to be sprayed because since they're acetone based, they dry very quickly, they flash off very quickly. The good thing is you can really control the absorption of the dye into the surface. And we're gonna do that by using, this is called a detail gun. It's from a company called Warwick, W-A-R-W-I-C-K. It is an HVLP gun used for doing touch up work or fine finish work. So that is what we're gonna use next. This is our dye color from the Mohawk Company. They just call this particular dye yellow. I know it's a dye, but you may not know that because on the label, they call it an ultra penetrating stain. It's really not a stain, it is a dye. They do that for marketing reasons. If you look at the back of it, where some of that dye spilled down over the writing, you can still read completely through it. So dyes have transparency that stains do not, which for me is critical when I'm finishing wood. We're gonna put that on maple today. Although this isn't highly figured maple, it's still hard maple and it's got some beautiful grain patterns to it that I wanna highlight. I don't wanna obscure those through pigment, which would stains, stains would do that. I, put, I loaded the dye into the gun already. I had four ounces of the yellow dye with two ounces of acetone added to it. Uh, you don't have to strain this out. That's another nice thing because it's not powder that you're dissolving into the carrier. This is pre-dissolved, so you can put it straight into the gun. So the next step is to spray the dye color on our sample. It's been only about five minutes, but already this dye is completely dry and we can move on to the finishing process. Now, another critical thing, when you have an NGR dye like this that's dissolved into acetone, you can buy a product off the shelf still in some stores called brushing lacquer. Basically, they thin that down with more uh, lacquer thinner and they put retarder in it to slow it down. If you tried to brush that finish over this surface, the problem is it's gonna wake that dye back up and you're gonna have a streaky mess on your hands. So when you're using NGR dyes, you need to spray apply your clear finishes. In this case, we're using our deft lacquer again. We're using the sanding sealer first, and then we'll move on to the finish. Spray it just like we did before, go around the perimeter, and then go on the face. We're only gonna use one coat of the sealer, that'll be dry in a few minutes. We're gonna give it a light sand with that really used 320 sandpaper and move on to our clear coats. But what I wanna demonstrate even now is the clarity of the color that you get with this. You do not obscure any of that grain by using dye colors like this. That's why I choose dyes over stains. We sprayed our sealer coat on, and as soon as it was dry, I've given it a light sanding with that beat up 320 sandpaper. Now what I'm gonna do though, is instead of just going straight to our clear final coats of lacquer, I'm gonna take that same dye color that we sprayed directly onto the wood, and I'm gonna spray it on half of our sample. And basically what we're doing is we're gonna change the tone by using this dye color that's soluble into acetone, get it to melt into that clear coat. This is a method I use a lot when I have color discrepancy on cabinetry, maybe a style and a rail, one style is lighter than the rail. I can do this to darken it up immediately and then move on to my clear finish coat. So here we go. I've turned this down to a round pattern now and I've turned the material knob way in so I don't have very much material. 
and I'm gonna use this cheater valve and cut down on the air even more. So it's a very soft, gentle spray. So here we go. That's done. This will be dry in a matter of minutes and then I can move right on to my clear finish coat. So you can see how much darker this side is versus this side, but we haven't affected the clarity of the grain at all. We still have all that beautiful grain pattern that shows through because it is a dye. The beauty of this acetone-based dye like this is they dry instantaneously. It's only been a matter of minutes. I can already move on to our clear finish, which is going to be the depth spray gloss lacquer again. Same thing, I'll go around the perimeter. Shoot it both ways and we're done. And that is our finished piece.